as Gaza smolders, so do tensions between Washington and Jerusalem over what happens next. Israeli forces on Monday entered Gaza's largest hospital, claiming they were targeting senior Hamas militants. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu next plans a major ground operation into the crowded city of Rafah, something President Joe Biden opposes unless there is a political and humanitarian plan. Speaking by phone Monday, the two leaders agreed to have teams meet in Washington in the coming days to discuss the situation before Israel makes a move. Our view is that there are ways for Israel to prevail in this conflict, to secure its long-term future, to end the terror threat from Gaza, and not smash into Rafah. That's what we're going to present in this integrated way when this team comes. Israel's leader was more sweeping in his summary of the discussion. We talked about the latest developments in the war, including Israel's commitment to achieve all the goals of the war, the elimination of Hamas, the release of all our hostages, and the promise that Gaza will no longer pose a threat to Israel, while providing the necessary humanitarian aid that helps achieve these goals. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned Monday that every second matters. Palestinians in Gaza are enduring horrifying levels of hunger and suffering. This is the highest number of people facing catastrophic anger ever recorded by the integrated food security classification system anywhere, anytime. The European Union's top diplomat, Joseph Borrell, went further, pointing an accusatory finger at Israel. It is unacceptable. The starvation is used as a weapon of war. Yes, the starvation is used as a weapon of war. Let's, let's say that. And it's not a question of a lack of sufficient supplies. Israel has accused Hamas militants, who launched the October 7th killing spree that sparked the conflict, of disrupting aid convoys. Analysts say that as Israel's main guarantor of security, the U.S. will pull lessons from its history and apply diplomatic pressure before resorting to putting conditions on military aid. The United States concluded, after more than 20 years of, of fighting in the Middle East, that the military piece is only the beginning. And what really matters is, can you take care of the population? Can you persuade the population? that there's a better future if they follow the course you want to take. A strategy complicated as Israel continues to relive the horrors of the deadliest day for the Jewish people in decades. The discussion in Israel is still about the threat that comes from Hamas, the sense that we have to make sure that October 7th never happens again. And I think a lingering sense that Palestinians are overwhelmingly supportive of Hamas and therefore compassion won't get you uh, a willingness to coexist. Compassion will mean that you're just helping people survive who will fight Israel in the future. Um, where that gets settled, I don't know, but I do think that Israel has a history of adhering to laws of war. But as these powerful players prepare to meet far from the horrors of life in Gaza, eight officials are asking, how much longer can civilians go on like this?